first reading is from Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Who saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want of food. your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The second lesson is from Ephesians. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times, and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true, true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the young people up and bring your backpack. And if you don't have backpacks, come on up. This is for you. Thank you. 
morning. Every year when we, when school begins, we always bless back backpacks. And we want to pray that God will watch over you and all the children and God will protect you. In the prayers today, we're going to pray for the Lighthouse Child and Family Development Center that is moving into Washington Avenue Baptist Church. And we were asked to give special prayers of protection for them because Washington Avenue Baptist Church is a primarily black church. And for some reason in our country right now, our black churches need special protection. So we're going to pray for that later. But here's what I want you to do. Find somebody and put your hand on their forehead. Go ahead, Carter, put your hand on Zach's head. Or right, here, I'll come and do it. And then repeat after me. God loves you. God bless you. God protect you. God give you a good year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now that's called a blessing. Now let's qu have a quick prayer for our backpacks. Here we go. Hold your backpack or somebody's and pretend you're holding your own. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for your love. We thank you that you do watch over us. that you are always with us. We pray that those who use these backpacks will know you are with them and guide them and love them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you can go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior in Jesus Christ. Amen. Back when I was in college, my roommate was um, Doug Reeder. I, I may have told you about Doug Reeder before, but Doug actually introduced me to Mick. So uh, I got to know Mick through Doug. Doug had a master's in trombone, master's in music, and his instrument of choice was the trombone. And he was pretty good, so he was a substitute trombonist for the Minnesota Orchestra. And he was called into duty one week, and he was supposed to play for the Minnesota Orchestra, so he was going to their practices, and I said, Doug, we're going to be there for the performance. So we uh, bought tickets. I can't remember if it was Mick I went with. <laughs> <laughs> or one of my, other, my colleagues' buddies is what I mean. But this particular concert was, back in the 70s in particular, it seemed like the discordant music came into vogue. And there was no melody, and it was very uh, sharp and hard on the ear ears at times. And there were the tremendous activity from the orchestra, and then pauses and silence, and then activity again and pauses and silence. 
in the middle of one of those pauses, just a beautiful, perfect note came out of a trombone. And I said, after the concert, Doug, we found Doug, and I says, said, Doug, I heard you this time. <laughs> I said, that was you, wasn't it? And he said, yeah, that was me. How do you, I said, how do you feel? He says, I just hope they'll invite me back. Because <laughs> one bad note, shame on me for picking on him for one bad note. Because in that concert, we probably played thousands of good notes, right? But it's that one bad note that we point out and we pick on. That seems to be what life is like. We talked about uh, David last week and his uh, a horrible event in his life, and David seemed to have a few. But it's interesting that God doesn't seem to point out and highlight those bad notes. When we have a word from God talking about David, it's always about how good he is, how faithful he is. And as I said on his deathbed, a man after God's own heart. In our Bible study this week, we did look at a passage from 2 Kings where Solomon, David dies. It says he slept with his ancestors. And Solomon is chosen right before that to be his successor, to be the king. And Solomon, although there's some real intrigue that goes on beforehand who, uh, with his brothers trying to get the throne and afterwards, but uh, Solomon was chosen. And not long after Solomon was king, Solomon has a dream. And in that dream, God comes to him. And here's how Solomon describes his father to Almighty God. You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father, David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in upright of, uprightness of heart toward you. Hmm. The good notes. Because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and an uprightness of heart toward you. Well, last week, we jumped to that text in Ephesians. And we're going to do that this week, too. Where the Apostle Paul is talking about walking. And again, he is dealing with the church at Ephesus, and we believe that he sent that letter. It was a circular letter that was sent to uh, all the churches in the area, but in emphasis they had in particular wanted to make sure our screen was down. Ephesus had some new Christians and you remember last week the admonition of the Apostle Paul was those of you who are thieves stop your thieving. This week he says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk. Now, we don't know what he meant by that, whether he was telling the people uh, that, that people were getting drunk like they do in every society, or whether, in particular, these people had been converted from the type of paganism that went to the temple to get drunk to get high, and in that buzz in their heads, they believed they were communion with God. We don't know, or maybe he meant both. But he was saying, no, that's not the way to behave for Christians. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And people who are filled with the Spirit have a special melody in their heart to God. 
sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs in their hearts to God. Let's back up a little bit and look at all of Ephesians. I've said before, it could be an outline of Ephesians could be the words sit, walk, stand. Sit is sitting with God in Christ in the heavenly places, sort of a cosmic view of the Christian life, already being in heaven with God in the heavenly places. And then we're to walk. This section comes from be careful how you walk. Uh, the New Revised Standard Version says be careful how you live. But literally it is be careful how you walk. So th this section is from the walking aspect. You're supposed to walk with the Spirit, in the Spirit, with God present in your lives. And then finally, stand. When that comes near the end, we're supposed to put on the full armor of God and stand against evil. Be careful how you walk. Don't be drunk. Be filled with the Spirit. And you have this melody in your heart. What makes Christians different? We have a melody in our heart. And then he says those words. Giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just as David was noted for his faithfulness, Christians are to be noted for their faithfulness, their faith. We live by faith. In fact, we could say that the Apostle Paul tells us we cannot please God without faith. We cannot please God without faith. It takes faith to live out that 20th verse, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It takes faith to constantly thank God for all things. Do you have something in your life that you don't want to thank God about? I do. Some miserable things, right? But the Apostle Paul expects with this melody in our heart, this faith of thanking God, that we will, in faith, find God's good no matter what happens. We pray for protection over our children. How many of you, when your children were growing up or if you have children now, I used to do it all the time. Pray, dear Lord, protect these children. Protect my children. Name them by name. Protect them. Watch over them. Guide them. Now, do I really expect God is going to make a car stop rather than run through a red light just to protect my children? Do I really expect that? I pray for that. Will it happen? Well, sometimes. But I know an awful lot of parents that pray that prayer and it does not happen. Dear Lord, protect them. Be with them. What I expect is God will be with them and they will know God is with them no matter what happens. The Apostle Paul had an awful lot of things happen to him if you look at his life that were not good things. He became hated by his own people and then he became hated by a lot of Christians. He was shipwrecked, he was beaten several times, left for dead 
one of those times, uh, stripped naked and humiliated in front of a whole community, put into prison, eventually beheaded for his faith. And it's the Apostle Paul that tells us, give thanks to God the Father at all times in everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God at all times for everything. Several years ago, every once in a while, our flowers don't get delivered, or sometimes I know they're not going to be delivered, and I'll deliver them. I can't rope somebody into doing it, so I'll deliver them. And I remember one Sunday, this was probably 12 years ago, I decided that I would deliver them to a woman who was coming to church who lived fairly close by, or, or she was staying fairly close by with her mother who was dying. But she just came to worship with us a couple of times. I thought, well, I'll bring her flowers. Called her. After church, I called her. And she answered the phone. And I said, hi, this is Pastor Dan from Messiah Lutheran Church. And there was just dead silence on the other end. And then I could tell she was crying, weeping. I said, that's okay, and let her compose herself. I said, I would like to deliver some flowers. And then she finally said, oh, yes, yes, you, you can come over. Please come over. So I went to visit her. And she said, oh, 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 please come in. I didn't know what to expect. But she said, you know, the reason I'm crying is my mother died last night. And that really isn't why I was crying. Last night, my husband also said that while I was gone, he left me, took all his belongings and left me. And I was just thinking to God, praying, dear God, I need you. I need your love. I need your help right now. And then you called me. Now, it just happened to be an accident, but it was me. And we talked for a little bit, and I want to know, want you to know, I did nothing for her, except before I left, I had her prayer. But she said, you don't know how much this meant to me. She found her own good. She says, now I know. Now, we might say her theology is bad, but she said, I took this as a sign that all is going to be all right, that God is with me. But the Apostle Paul knew a life filled with difficulty and tragedy. Jesus, God's son, knew a life of difficulty and tragedy. You and I can expect that too. But in faith, we can always have a melody in our heart because we know that God is always with us. And the worst that ever happens to us is not the worst. God is always with us and redeems us.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father. With confidence in God's compassion and generosity, let us pray for the church and all of God's creation. Gracious God, you send us the bread of life, Jesus. Nurture your church with the food and drink of eternal life as we celebrate Holy Communion. Fill us with your spirit as we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, giving thanks to you at all times and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy. As the Lighthouse Child and Family Development Center moves from First Baptist to Washington Avenue Baptist, we ask for your guidance and protection. Guide the leaders and teachers of the center and protect them as well as the families and the children they serve. Lord, in your mercy. Be the bread of life for those who lack and suffer hunger throughout the world. May all who suffer know the nourishment of your love. Feed your creation with your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. God, our healer, let your nurturing life renew and strengthen those who are ill. We pray that you send your healing, especially to Katie Grady, Roy Freeberg, Tiffany Giles, Karen Gillette, Bill Howard, Scotty Inman, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampe, Agnes Majla, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Greg Robinson, John Reynolds, Linda Waltz, Wayne Sproul, Ann Wilbur, Cindy Jones, and Florence Stilwell. Are there any others? We thank you for the living bread that came down from heaven. Hear our prayers of gratitude. Especially for our young people going back to school. May they be excited about learning and excited about life. May all who have died abide in you and rejoice at the banquet of your heavenly feast. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Charlie Boyd. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Just, just keep talking, okay. it, it'll happen. <laughs> Today we're going to hear about uh, the last two projects we're going to describe to you. Uh, but first I'd like to highlight a few things about the committee just to remind you of some important aspects of their work. Um, first I want to remind you that the endowment funds are not part of the general budget. They don't come from the weekly offerings. And it's not part of the Upon the Straw com uh, campaign. So all of the funds that are donated to the endowment committee are independent of those things. A second important thing to keep in mind is that all of the funds from the committee go directly to extending the outreach mission projects of the church and projects that make the worship life here more enriched and enjoyable and comfortable for the members here in this building. Um, 
One project I do want to, you've heard a number of the projects the last few weeks, but one I want to highlight that we mentioned but not a whole lot uh, was said about. One of the things that the endowment committee has, or the endowment fund, has contributed to that all of you see on a weekly basis are all the furniture pieces that are now in the narthex. Um, included in those are some, let's see, um, gosh, there's so much here. The Trinity symbol on the west on the wall of the narthex. I think we had, it's um, 12 chairs, 10 tables, four bulletin, two couches, and the portable coffee cart. We're all part of that purchase. The funds didn't come solely from the endowment. They also came from Thrivent, individual member contributions, and memorial fund um, money. But it was the endowment fund that was sort of the catalyst and brought all those things together to let that get done. So, <coughs> all right. If you have any questions about the work of the endowment committee or how you uh, apply for an endowment grant or what the kind of things we fund, please see any one of the committee members, myself, um, Mark Heron, Martha Morris, Dan Carlson, uh, Dick Peterson, and we can give you some of those details. Before we end this uh, session this morning, though, we have two more people that we're going to hear from uh, speaking about projects that were funded out of this year's endowment um, money. Uh, we have Cassie Bimick and I think Nancy Holman is here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, Cassie? Thank you. And I, I requested a couple of different grants, and I don't know if any of you guys have ever had a great idea that you didn't know first who to tell, and then secondly, if you told that person, they would say, okay, that sounds great, now you need to come up with the money for that. And so I know I have lots of great ideas, and um, at jobs I've worked at, you know, I worked at the VA hospital for a little while, um, for a year, and during my internship, and, and that's a government, you know, it's government-run program, and I had some great ideas, little things that I thought would really improve the hospital and patient care, and I went to, I tried to find the right person, and they were like, okay, great, well, we don't have the money in the budget for that, so it just stopped there, and so the endowment committee is a wonderful, wonderful program that we have here that can really help if you have an idea, and you really want to do something that's going to help like Rick said, enrich the church, enrich your experience here, make this place our home, a place where we can feel comfortable. So um, a couple of things that, that I submitted this year, again, were people that had ideas and came to me and said, I would really like to see this happen. And I was like, great. You know, of course, um, I'm on church council and we may not have a budget, but this is a great way we can get this done. And it will, they were both approved. One of them um, is a noise reduction ceiling tiles in the um, children's um, school rooms in there, and so uh, a couple of the rooms in there for um, Sunday school were really, really loud. I don't know if any of you have been in a room of lots of two-year-olds running around on the tile floor, but sometimes it can be a little bit hard to teach them and to talk over that noise, and so ceiling tiles can really help decrease how much noise is in that room when the two-year-olds are all running around playing so they can keep better control and minister to them a little bit more effectively. So that was one of the projects, and that's made a really big difference. Both of those are already, they're submitted, they're done, the tiles are in, and it didn't take very long. We didn't have to wait till next year to try to approve it on budget. So that was one of them. The second one, which we're still in the process of doing and I would love some help on, is getting some art in the church office. Has anyone been in the church office? Anybody? <laughs> a few people? <laughs> okay, so it's pretty much just brown walls. <laughs> so, um, you know, which is fine, but I think that we could um, have a little bit nicer atmosphere in there. There, are, there is a lot of, um, there are a lot of meetings, there are a lot, is a lot of creativity going on in there, things that people are trying to help improve the church, and having some art might make that process go a little bit better. So if anyone is interested in helping me pick out some art, I have some money that has been allocated for that. I would love to get your help and input and just let the church office know if you're interested in having a say in that. I'd love to have some local artists or if anyone knows someone that maybe would want to help with that. Um, I'm up to, I, we're just start starting that process, so I, I'm open to all of your ideas. But uh, those are my two projects, and I'll get it over to her. Thank you. Thank you, Cassie. Um, I wanted to share with you from the application for the grant, the category that the Messiah Lighthouse applied under. 
and it's for outreach into the community and synod, including but not limited to grants to ELCA seminaries, colleges, or students attending such schools, social service agencies, institutions, and agencies to which this congregation relates and to special programs designed for those persons in our parish area who are in spiritual or economic need. And our Lighthouse Child Development Center does relate, it's, it's a way to extend our ministry into the community in the care of families who have preschool age children. Um, the grant funds are used to support programming uh, towards accreditation. Al Messiah Lighthouse is one of just a handful of child care centers in Greene County that have Missouri accreditation. And that is quite an accomplishment. To my knowledge, we're the only faith-based child care center that has met the criteria for Missouri accreditation. Um, because of the fine reputation that our center has in the community, we also have in the last year been eligible for scholarship support for four of our students, four of our children, through the Every Child Promise organization. Uh, these scholarships are offered to families who make too much money to qualify for state child care subsidy, but they cannot uh, by themselves afford a quality preschool experience for their children. And with one in five children entering the Springfield Public Schools being deemed not ready for school, this is really important. And I can tell you with confidence that the nine five-year-olds that we sent to kindergarten last week were ready. And not only that, they know that God loves them and that they're loved and valued by this congregation. The endowment funds that we requested have gone for uh, equipment and materials for classrooms. Um, already purchased have been replacements for original equipment when the center opened that have been heavily used and well loved. And that was a climber in the infant classroom, a rug in the preschool classroom, and a toy kitchen for the pre-K classroom. Still to be purchased with the remaining funds are two tables for our two-year-old room to replace a horseshoe-shaped table. We're getting two, I think they're 72-inch tables that will make it easier to do center-based uh, learning to meet accreditation requirements. So thank you very much, everyone who has contributed, all the people who have put their, their time and talent into managing the endowment to make things like this possible. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that 
that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after cup, supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Servant, go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Mine own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son, glory to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen, 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 amen. Wise and generous God, we thank you that at this holy table you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and call others to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And I'll let you uh, read your messenger. Uh, a couple of big events coming up. Both are God's work, Our Hands event on Saturday, September 12th. And then Sunday, September 13th is Rally Day, and we are going to have a potluck that day. Uh, so mark your calendars. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take. The love of God that gives us, gives us courage and strength. And the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with peace and contentment be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, 
offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us.